The Unsullied wanted your head, of course. So our new king has chosen to send you to the Night's Watch. No one is very happy. Sansa and Arya wanted you freed. In previous videos, we talked about the possibility of Jon Snow becoming the villain of his own story, after discovering that Bran Stark manipulated all the events in Game of Thrones, leading him to take Daenerys' life. Although this might sound like a crazy theory, in recent videos we saw a letter from George Martin written in 1993, where he said that Bran and Jon had become enemies, and that Bran was sitting in an uncomfortable chair, which could refer to the Iron Throne. Obviously the throne was destroyed, but now Bran is king of Westeros and Jon is exiled in the north. But what if the theory we're talking about were true, and Jon wishes to retake the throne and finish off Bran? How could he accomplish this? In this video, we'll be talking about the strategy Jon Snow could use to take control of Westeros. And if you want to know everything related to the Game of Thrones universe, from theories, news and stories, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Welcome to the Three-Eyed Raven. This revenge story arc begins with Jon in the North, realizing Bran's manipulations. Perhaps having visions of a new threat in the North, or in the world because of the Three-Eyed Raven. Let's remember that Kit Harington mentioned how Jon Snow was not in a good state of mind after Game of Thrones, which indicates that he is not satisfied with what happened with Daenerys. John just needs to understand why things happened the way they did, and then he would understand that he is supposed to be the one reigning, and not the manipulative raven. Now, if John decides to conquer Westeros and take his place as King Targaryen, it couldn't happen overnight. John needs to build an army to stand up to Bran and his allies. The first step John could take is to recruit the wildlings. John would meet with the leaders of the Wildlings beyond the Wall, recruiting warriors who are loyal to John. We don't know if there are more villages farther north where John could recruit more people, but we believe that the world of Westeros is much larger than what is shown on the maps. It is possible that John will encounter entire villages in the place of Eternal Winter, and somehow convince them to join his battle. So the first step for John would be to recruit the Wildlings. Wildlings are known for their skill in combat and their ability to adapt to different terrain and conditions. This makes them valuable allies for Jon Snow in his mission to conquer Westeros. Jon's next step would be to conquer Winterfell, this is something that could happen in two, different ways. The first option is for Jon to propose to Sansa and officially become the King of Winterfell. After all, the Northmen consider him a king. If Sansa does not agree to this proposal, Jon could take Winterfell by force, and explain to the Northerners Bran's manipulations and how he is supposed to be king. Obviously, many men in the North prefer Jon as leader rather than Sansa. Sansa grew up among the Lannisters, and many distrusted her in the North. Jon Snow is a person who even gave his life for his men. Which is possibly why most of the warriors in Winterfell would support a Jon Snow rebellion against Sansa. When Jon conquers Winterfell, this would be the moment when all of Westeros would be on high alert, because it means that a new threat is rising in the north, and it is not the White Walkers, but Aegon Targaryen. We know no king! But the king in the north whose name is Stark. The north remembers. He's my king. From this day until his last day. He is the white wolf. The king in the north. The king in the north. The king in the north.
Now, a race is on to find Drogon. We know that in the end of Game of Thrones, Bran Stark sets out to find Drogon's whereabouts, but Jon Snow might be one of the only people in Westeros who can control the dragon. After Jon conquers Winterfell, the next step would be to transport himself and his men to Essos in search of Drogon. This is where the story could become more complicated. If Daenerys is not resurrected, Drogon could be a wild dragon in Volantis, or even live near the destroyed city of Valyria. Here Jon could learn even more of his ancestors and claim Drogon for his own. If Jon Snow has the support of the North and Drogon, we are already starting to talk about a major threat to Westeros. If Jon claims the dragon, obviously the Dothraki would see Jon as a leader to follow. Jon will explain to them that it was Bran who led him to destroy Daenerys, and everyone will begin to understand that the only option they have is to dethrone the Three-Eyed Raven. The next step Jon could take is to recruit the Iron Islands, as well as House Martell and Dorne. These would be the most logical allies for Jon to face Westeros. Historically, Dorne has been in disagreement with King's Landing, and this could be a theme that will be repeated again in the Game of Thrones sequel. Jon then begins his march to Westeros, where in Storm's End, Gendry could join along with his men. Obviously, this would not be so easy for Jon, as Bran has the ability to see everything that happens, even time travel. But I think dragons are the three-eyed raven's blind spot. As long as Drogon is with Jon, Bran may not be able to see what is going on. Possibly that's why Bran doesn't know exactly where the dragon is. If Bran can't see Drogon or control him, this would be bad news for Bran, as Jon could arrive with his army at the gates of King's Landing to claim his throne. War would be inevitable. Bran's men and Jon Snow's men, or rather, Aegon Targaryen, would fight again. The Stark family would be divided. Arya would possibly fight alongside Jon Snow, while Sansa would look for a way to betray him and keep the throne. What would be the outcome of the battle between Jon and Bran Stark? I think if we were to see the confrontation at this magnitude, we could see the near total destruction of Westeros, and Jon Snow could cause far more damage than the Night King. While it wouldn't be an easy mission, I think in the end Jon could be crowned king. But tell me what do you think of this theory about the Game of Thrones sequel? Do you think this is the way Jon will claim the throne, or do you think Jon can't beat Bran? And if you like this content, I invite you to become a member of this channel. Each contributor will see their name at the end of all videos. And for more videos with theories, news, and stories from the Game of Thrones universe, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. You are on. The Three-Eyed Raven